is a thought experiment. If you hadn't noticed, I rather enjoy such things. They help me to understand things. And what I wanted to experiment in my thoughts is regarding prayer. If God had said, here's the formula, everyone. My prophet Mark has given me the formula, or, or I have given Mark my prophet's formula. The formula is fast a combined 10 days, minimum of one day each, and pray 50 hours for whatever it is that you are desiring for me to do. And once you get to those two things, boom, I'm going to do what you're asking me to do. 10 and 50. 50 hours prayer, 10 days fasting. However long it takes you. Day here, day there. And all 10 in a row. 50 in a row. Hey, we might be able to test you and see how much you really care. How quick you get it done. We can still have standards. This guy only took him the, the 10 days. He fasted the whole 10 days. That guy took a month. He doesn't even... Anyway, that's <laughs> side humor. But let's say there was such a thing. There's a million questions I can come up with as far as how that would work out. Would people really do exactly that? You have some loved one who's got some issue, whatever you think they're doing wrong. Maybe it really is wrong. Maybe they're addicted to something, hurting themselves. Or maybe it's just something you don't like about them. That maybe isn't really evil. But hey, you executed the formula. And now they got to do it. But I don't want to focus on the side questions. I want to focus on this question. Why didn't God give us that formula? Because what God doesn't do and what he doesn't say sometimes says a lot in and of itself. So if he could have done that, but he chose not to, what does that say? I think it it says, again, there's a lot of things, but I want to focus on the main things I think it says. One of which is he's not your cosmic genie. He's, he's not your, your magic gumball machine that you just do the right things and then he's going to give them to you. He is an actual person. So connecting that thought is I think he wants us to know him, to know who he is. Because one of the analogies I like to use commonly here is what if you did treat him like a person? And when you treat a person like a person, your focus, hopefully, if you have a healthy relationship, I understand there are unhealthy relationships, gold diggers and all that stuff. But in a healthy relationship, your goal isn't, hmm, what do I need to do? What sacraments do I need to execute? What obedience is? What sacrifices, what proofs must I do that my friend would give me stuff I want? That's not what we do. We, in a healthy relationship, we enjoy spending time with our friend. That's evidence that God didn't give us that form. That is evidence that he wants us to learn to trust him and to learn that being in his presence is a wonderful thing. Kind of like being in the presence of a friend that you enjoy. Kind of like that. I'm sure it's not as special as your friend. Who knows? Maybe God has something better. Yeah, it's just a thought. But if that's true, and I think all indications are that because people pray and travail and fast and wail and do all kinds of things with all kinds of mixed, mixed results. And I'm not saying he never answers prayers like that. He has his own reasons for doing what he does. I was saying I'm putting it to you to consider that maybe what he wants more than anything is your time and to give you his time because whatever you pray for you're praying for something in this world. It's just temporary anyway. If you're praying for a healing that person's just going to get sick and die later or die maybe they won't get sick but that's the most common prayers, but yeah, I understand you're praying for someone to be saved. That's a good thing. But that, even in that, that presumes that God 
is not doing his own work in their hearts. That somehow he reached you and it was only by benefit of some other person praying for you? Is that really what we want to believe? I mean, I used to kind of believe that because I was told that. I wouldn't be knowing God except for someone else praying for me. So therefore, I must pray for all these other people. Or otherwise, they won't be saved because God, they don't say this, but they in effect imply that God is impotent as far as reaching people in and just by himself, by his own efforts. I don't believe that. I think he is quite able and he is in fact involved in people's lives right now all the time trying to reach them. And if he guided me to go talk to somebody, it's not that I wouldn't do it. I would definitely do it. But he just presumed that I need to do that or they won't be saved. I think it's mighty presumptuous. It's it's a, it's a grand ego, actually, a person that can do that. I was thinking of another word, one of these big fancy words. I'll think of it maybe later before the video's over. But anyway, he wants to spend time with you. So if you're focusing on getting all these things from him, even if it's so-called good things like other people's salvation, by just always making appeals to him to gimme, gimme, gimme. Excuse me, my eyes are just hurting. Foggy days hurt my eyes worse than sunny days. Whoa, I just ran a red light right in front of me. But uh, to really think about that, why didn't he give a formula? It's not a proof. I understand that. The, he doesn't give proofs like that on anything anyway. And I think it goes to the fact that he wants someone actually seeking him. Because if you, you need him to prove to you something, you need God to prove to you as if your life isn't proof enough. The existence of all that is, isn't proof enough that he's there, that he's worth seeking, that he's worth getting to know, finding out who he is. What kind of person would create everything? I mean, I, I, I'm not judging you if you're not interested in that. I wasn't for many, many years. Just the concept wasn't presented to me. And I believe he did present it to me eventually. He presented that to me. And then you think of the next step, that he not only did all that, he actually gave himself for me. But that's... That's another thing. I just want to get to the root of that. And I know I'm answering it, but I'm asking you to ask yourself. And maybe if you feel like, you know, challenge my my thesis, if you'd like. Because I believe he doesn't give formulas or anything like that. Because we're all different. And he wants to get to know you for who you are. Not according to a formula. He wants to get to know me and everyone else according to that. Not according to formula, according to the person of who you are. He's really interested in that. And that understanding, revelation, epiphany, however you want to call that, caused me to want to get to know who he is. Because that's a very interesting person. He is a person. He happens to be the creator of the universe. And that's amazing that the creator of the universe wants to know who I am. And he wants me to, to voluntarily seek him. Not out of fear, not of, out of obedience, not out of, of sacrifice, not out of an obligation or a desire to prove something to him. But simply because he seems like a very interesting person that I would like to get to know. And when I get to know him more, I find out that I love him. Because he first loved me before I even knew or cared that he was even there that's an amazing God he's a living God that's why again I don't believe he gives formulas he doesn't do that there's instances I understand here and there in the Bible and people want to apply that to their lives now I don't think that's productive let alone accurate in any way shape or form it takes away the individuality of your God and and his ability to choose to do what he will, when he will, as well as yourself. Live your life. Get to know this God. You don't need to do how what Jabez did, or Daniel did, or, or anyone did. You're who you are. He is who he is. Get to know each other. That's what he wants. Or he doesn't. And you can go make a statue and pray to that. That's cool if you want to do that leave it a banana or something and maybe it'll smile upon you and and bless you in your life that's my thought for today in jesus name amen